Today we're going to be looking at removable appliances in orthodontic treatment. Towards the end of the presentation, I will be providing you with a mnemonic that will allow you to remember the components of a removable appliance. So what is a removable appliance? These are single arch appliances that can be removed from the patient's mouth. They can only tilt individual teeth, but can also be utilized to move blocks of teeth. Furthermore, they can be used to allow for differential tooth eruption via bite planes or buckle capping. So what is the role of a removable appliance? Well, they have two roles. One is the active role and one is a passive role. And we'll be looking at both of them in great detail. The active role of removable appliances is that they allow movements of blocks of teeth. For example, during the correction of a buccal crossbite by upper arch expansion using a midline screw. They can also correct localized crossbites, such as a correction of an upper and incisor. They can also lead to overbite reduction by the utilization of anterior bite planes. They can also be used in conjunction with other appliances, such as a headgear, to facilitate the distalization of upper molars. And they can also be used for elimination of occlusal interferences. They also have a passive role as well, which is very important. And they can act as a space maintainer. They can also act as a retainer and sometimes even a habit deterrent for patients who, for example, are digit sucking. So what are the components that make a removable appliance? Well, if you remember the mnemonic Arab, where A equals the active components, R equals the retentive components, A equals anchorage, and then the final is B, which is the base plate. I will be looking into each of these in much more detail. So the active components usually comprise of a spring or a screw, and these are very versatile and quite cheap to construct. What is used for retention? So retention is very important because we don't want the appliance to fall out of the patient's mouth. This will definitely have a considerable effect on patient cooperation and compliance. So the retentive components that we use are, for example, an Adam's crib. Now, these are approximately 0.7 millimeters in diameter and they're made from stainless steel wire and they usually fit around the posterior teeth, usually the molars. You can also have other size wires as well, such as 0.6 millimeters, and these are great retentive components around premolars and primary molars. You can also have anterior retention, which is gained by a labial bow or a clasp, and these are also constructed in a 0.7 millimeter wire. The next is the anchorage. Anchorage is very important because you do not want unwanted tooth movements due to opposite forces being generated by active components. So one of the functions of the base plate is that it actually provides some degree of anchorage, which is very, very important. The base plate, following on to B, equals base plate. The base plate is very important because it actually holds all the elements together. And as we said before, it provides a function of anchorage, but it also has active components as well. Now, if you use it as a flat anterior bite plane, for example, you will cause the posterior teeth to erupt, and this will result in a reduction in the overbite. Whereas if you use a posterior bite plane, you will cause your incisors to further erupt and this will cause an increase in overbite. Thank you very much for listening. We hope you found this presentation useful. Please kindly like and share. It really helps the channel grow and we'll be bringing more mnemonics in the future to help you with your learning. Thank you very much indeed.